Reading from AnnaVonWrites.com, Essential Knowledge for Every American by Judge Anna. Every time you incorporate anything, you take it off the land and out from under the law of the land, including the Constitution, and place it in the international jurisdiction of the sea and under the law of the sea. The perpetrators responsible for the mess this country is in incorporated a federal governmental services corporation doing business as the United States of America Incorporated in 1868 and began using it as a false front for racketeering. By 1965, all the unincorporated state governments had been seduced by bribery and promises of federal revenue sharing, that is, kickbacks from federal corporate racketeering, to incorporate as federal municipal franchises. The counties then followed suit to get their share of the loot. This is why when you are presumed to reside in these counties and states, you can't access the law of the land, can't access the protections and guarantees of the Constitution, and can't access the common law. This is also why common law disappeared from the courts and the reason the Constitution and the other organic laws are not being enforced. Once the main governmental services corporation was set up and all their state and county franchises were established, Everyone whose job it is to enforce the organic and public laws of this country were retasked, like flipping a switch to enforce the private statutory law and public policies of the corporations responsible for this travesty instead. This doesn't mean that our organic law, including our Constitution, disappeared, nor our public law embodied by the United States statutes at large either. It just means that all the people you hired and paid and relied upon to uphold and enforce the actual law of this country were instead commandeered to do the petty bidding of corporate managers and kept busy enforcing private corporate statutes and codes and regulations instead. Instead of representing you and your best interests, all the people you elected for that purpose were tasked to benefit and act in the best interest of the Governmental Services Corporation and all its state and county franchises. This is why government has just continued to get richer and more powerful and more out of control while you've been harassed and defrauded and this entire country has been run as a den of thieves for a hundred years. This change of government from national to international status changes your presumed political status from that of one of the free, sovereign, and independent people to that of a person, an incorporated entity and vessel in commerce. FDR created millions of foreign situs trusts merely named after living Americans and named these incorporated persons as sureties for the debts of the bankrupt United States of America Incorporated. Your name was thus enfranchised like a Dairy Queen franchise presumed to belong as an asset to a bankrupt parent corporation and also presumed to be standing good for its debts. This public trust was named after you using the same name you were taught to use in school and which appears on all your various records so that there's no way to distinguish between the public trust person and the private natural person. It was then easy for the criminals to address bills actually owed by the public trust they named after you to you and force you to pay those bills as if they were your bills. It's an odd combination of identity theft, credit fraud, mail fraud, and constructive fraud practiced on an unimaginably large and institutionalized scale. After that, the International Monetary Fund took over the governmental services contract and began operating the United States Incorporated, styled as all caps, and its state of Wyoming, styled as all caps, and similar municipal franchises. They too set up individual franchises named after you. These were set up as SESTA KV Trusts, operated under your given name, styled as all caps, like, for example, Susan Marie Jeffords, styled as all caps. All these trusts were born on the land, but then removed to Puerto Rico, as if you were a snowbird who moved there for fun. This brought this public trust under the foreign territorial law of Puerto Rico. The monsters were thus enabled to send bills to 
Susan Marie Jeffers styled as upper and lower case and to Susan Marie Jeffers styled as all upper caps, upper case. And poor old Sue back home kept paying them faithfully where she got thrown into court and harassed and fined and sentenced to jail for failure to do so. They were also able to invoke administrative law by pretending that the victim was one of their franchise owners or territorial law by pretending the victim was living in Puerto Rico. Just this past March, the United States Incorporated went insolvent. That was 2015. And right on time, Barack Hussein Obama announced that a whole new tribe of public franchises named after living Americans was to be created. This time they named Puerto Rican Public Transmitting Utilities after you, resulting in names that are styled as all caps, but only using middle initials like Susan M. Jeffers. This is what is known as a non-specific name because nobody knows what the M stands for and therefore nobody can know for sure who it's being addressed to. Is it Susan Marie Jeffers, Susan Marilyn Jeffers, Susan Margaret Jeffers? Meanwhile, the innocent victim of all this corporate legal chicanery labors on, paying every debt that comes in the mail, and the vicious racketeers responsible for this keep churning out more laws for her to obey and racking up more and more debt against her credit and her assets. Now that you all have a bird's eye view of how this has been accomplished, you're rightfully ready to take action in your own behalf. There are a number of things you can do. First and foremost, you can share this information with all the people responsible for this circumstances, the members of Congress, the state legislators, the county and the borough officials, the local city council and assembly members, the members of the bar associations, the local and state and federal police, the FBI, the DHS and the military. Everyone who is at fault for letting this happen in the first place and for continuing to perpetuate it. This is not the government you are owed and which you paid for. Now that you know what happened, how it was done, and who is at fault, it's up to you and your friends and neighbors, including every honest man and woman involved at any, any level of the present government, to correct it. Let's all note that once this circumstance is fully understood by enough Americans, nobody will want to be associated in any way with the criminality and ugliness of the past and its swindles. It will no longer be fashionable in the Beltway to refer to us as livestock. So second, your next task is to reorganize things for your benefit. Send the U.S. Secretary of Tre State and the U.S. Secretary of Treasury a registered letter autographed and thumb printed by you informing them that you are expatriating to your birthright political status and require them to discharge any liens, mortgages, titles held under color of law or other outstanding debts being held or accrued under your given name. Also ask them to unblock your accounts, deliver an account statement, correct their records, and provide an appropriate and truthful international passport for your use. Third, get busy reorganize your, reorganizing your local county government as an unincorporated body politic on the land. Your first step is to call public meetings, explain the problem, hold elections, fill the vacant public offices, and beginning enforcing the organic and public laws of, the, of this country again. At a minimum, you'll want to elect a county land recorder, public notaries, justices of the peace, judges at common law, court clerk, bailiff, coroner, and most important, the county sheriff on the land. Once elected and properly installed in his rightful public office, the sheriff is enabled to deputize as many able-bodied men as needed to ensure enforcement. Just as you can't force the rats to immediately dissolve their incorporated states and counties, they can't deny or impede your right to exercise the jurisdiction of the land and the public offices you are owed. The county sheriffs operating the land jurisdiction can now begin enforcement of the actual law and the county courts can inform the U.S. District Courts that American common law courts are up and running in the federal postal districts and their services are no longer needed per mulligan ex parte. Fourth, now that you have declared your proper political status and have your county governments back up and running as incorporated associations of free people, you are in in position to gather the counties and sponsor state elections and fill the vacant state offices too. 
Fifth, you are now in a position to select trustworthy deputies, accountable fiduciary officers, not representatives, to represent your unincorporated states of America at a true Continental Congress, not a United States Congress, Congress which is supposed to deal only with international affairs related to providing 19 enumerated services, and take care of long overdue business such as officially recognizing and enrolling the western states of the union and setting, settling their land assets in their possession. This hasn't been done because although they were owed the state compacts and are treated as states, no actual congress having the power to enroll these new states has been ceded since 1860. Their land assets have remained in limbo as public trust property controlled by the United States styled as all caps, and federal states styled as all caps. All this may seem overwhelming at first, but consider this. You are the heirs of the republic. It has come down to you the same way you might inherit a house. It's yours now. You are the ones responsible for fixing it up, remodeling it, defining it, building it, and making it fit to live in again. You don't have to worry about violating archaic laws or agonize over what it what is past and gone, spend your energy now on creating a new vision for an Amer America that is at peace, prosperous, and free of Brit British meddling at last. Reading from AnnaVonWrites.com uh, about the third week of January, this came out about the probably just after the 1st of January 2018. It's called Announcements Take Notice. As of the first week of October 2017, the municipal United States ceased functioning. Attempts to replace it with a UN Corporation regional government have thus far been successfully rebuffed and prevented. That leaves us to deal with the territorial United States government, which is controlled by the military and has substantially different rules and procedures than the old Muni government. As a result, some of the recommendations I have made to people in the past either no longer apply or require some tweaking to make them work in this altered scenario. Those who got their paperwork done and in before October 2017 are grandfathered in and have their records established via the old Muni process. They have to be recognized as civilians. Those who didn't do this have to follow a different process, which is yet to be negotiated to the same ends, correction of the public record, reclaiming ownership of your name, names, uh, styled as all caps, and recognition of your civilian status with respect to the military government. The criminals in charge have made a great hash of things. It will require a lot of effort to correct and some confusion is unavoidable. Just remember the key points. You are no kind of citizen, but are a civilian non-combatant national. Make use of all means to establish public claim of your names and name styled as all caps as of your actual birthday. This can be accomplished by publication in newspapers, sealed registered mail record copies, certificates of assumed name, formal name changes followed by acknowledgement, acceptance, and reconveyance of deed and title to the land and soil of your birth state recorded with the local land recording office, a corrected deed to your name and estate, land, etc., can be used to the same effect. Whatever means and route you use to claim back your name and estate, it will be necessary to begin carrying copies of paperwork with you, ready to produce as part of your identification process. Mr. Trump is doing the best he can with a bad situation. Our country as a whole is indeed facing an emergency of sorts. N now more than ever, it is imperative that those born in this country claim their names and their natural political status and organize their county general assemblies. There's not a moment to waste. Your destiny and the destiny of your country depends on your willingness to set the record straight and organize the local county government you are owed. Assistance is available from the Michigan Journal. Michigan General Journal Assembly. In addition, given the history and the current state of affairs, it seems only prudent for people to make the effort 
to set aside emergency stocks of food, fuel, water, and yes, some silver coinage. I am now and will continue to benefit somewhat if you decide to make use of the mint builder opportunity offered by Paul to acquire some silver, but the real benefit may be to you and your families to get serious about a moderate amount of preparation for possible disruptions. At present, there is no better or other option on the table than to fall back to using gold for international transactions and silver for domestic purchases. I am hopeful that we will get through the woods and be able to ultimately outgrow our belief in money and be able to transition to a more enlightened system of value soon. But until then, the transition via the old gold and silver standard is, in my opinion, likely to happen. See this article and over 800 others on Anna's website. You spell it A-N-N-A-V-O-N-R-E-I-T-Z dot com. Find the PayPal button and give generously if you're able.